green when they put it up. So it took whatever shape it was going to take in those number of years. Yeah. So that would be the maybe the discrepancy when you're looking over a doorway. What, but actually the doors work pretty well, so there wasn't a lot of settling. Yeah. So my concern is worrying about getting the roof structure so that it'll support slate. Uh, and I'm not worried about, well, and we'll use a couple of years ago when we had storm after storm after storm on the roofs, and it didn't do anything to it, you know? Yeah, and then this this pitch is really steep, so anything that gets on there, there, it does it not stay, stay on there. No, because the wind will get a lot of it all. Right. right. I don't know if you noticed the weight of the steel. Did you see the weight at the bottom, the second column? Yeah. It's like almost no, 5,000 pounds. Steel. Yeah, 47? I thought it was more than 47. that. 47. 47, okay. And there's there's a few items that are oh, missing. Over two tons. There's basically two metric tons. Right? So you're looking at 32,000 pounds of slate. Yeah. With five, for almost 5,000 pounds of steel. Yeah. To reinforce And that's not including the, the wood that has to go in there as well. Yeah, that's just a foot of roof. Yeah. So what am I hearing? Are we going to just say, throw all this out and just say, screw it and put slate up there and, and walk away? Uh, no, I, okay. I, I still, I, I just still, want to know where we're going. What, <laughs> I'm, what I'm saying is, reinforcing the, the roof structure mm -hmm. is is one thing that was brought to our attention. Yeah. It was brought to our attention when I was in the audience a couple of times mm -hmm. yeah. beforehand. So, addressing those issues is a possibility. If there is anything that does occur with the building, mm -hmm. you have the ability to do something next year with it. But I don't really think you're going to have that problem. You know, they're doing diligent because they're making sure that, again, that that roof is carried by the entire structure, and they're using today's code. So, I don't know, that's, that's just my opinion. I guess if you could probably just summarize it, because I'm not sure where you stand on this. Yeah. I'm just with the, taking care of the rafters or the joists or whatever. So basically doing everything here on, on the plan, For, but not... Over the doors. The, uh, all right, where are the doors? The doors are right here, right? Yeah. So you, you're talking about taking this stuff out and just doing what's up here? Just doing what's up top. What does that say? Some oh, steel, that's for sure. A lot of steel. and Well, my husband went over there and looked, and I think you're taking all the, the panels on the front mm -hmm. facade, then you, the, the boxes on the side of the door, mm -hmm. it would have to be ripped off on the side in order to open the back mm -hmm. and slide the metal in that way. And each yeah. one of those, of the smaller ones, mm -hmm. is 70 to 100 pounds each. Yeah. Um, the one that would be required over the door is substantially heavier, mm -hmm. and so and then you're looking at it extra labor, um, staging. Yeah. I, as far as this, I, I know these people personally. They do my full sites. Okay. <laughs> I talk to them on a regular basis, so I kind of have to accuse myself on that one. Okay. Yeah, and, and also, you might want to notice, that was sight unseen, correct? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. They, did, they looked at the plans, that was it. Yeah. And the Cohen Steel emphasized the fact that these are estimates, mm -hmm. but they have to have a field measurement of every single piece before they, because if they're going to punch a hole and it doesn't line up, so you will Cohen Mom do that? No, 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 the earth. Who would do it? GC? The GC, GC. Would, would, would measure. I have one out there pending, but and I went up there last Friday with them, mm -hmm. but they were strictly GC guys. They had guys with the nice shoes. Yeah. yeah. So. What's a, la what's a ladder? <laughs> if you could find a contractor. Well, I know the old king does good work. I mean, I can, I can vouch for that, but that's what's hard to work with. If you could find a contractor that could go up and look at it, using the engineer's drawings for up top yep. and using uh, his knowledge of working with wood frames, he may find alternatives to what the engineer's referring to that might be a lot cheaper and may get you a better price. But I mean, mm -hmm. There's 
So even though it's almost like a design build. Yep. Yeah, you know, design it, build it, yeah. you know, kind of using the drawings as a. Base. You use that as a guide. Mm -hmm. I can reach out to the locals again, see if they can come up with a, some recommendations for well, the I, I mean, I understand where Bob is coming from on the, uh, the, the headers on the doors and stuff of that nature. Um, we didn't ask him to look into that. We didn't ask him to do it. I was kind of surprised they went there. It hasn't fallen off the building yet. I tend to agree with you on that. I was kind of taken aback when they decided to want to do headers. Well, in, in his mm -hmm. estimate, it talks about leveling the roof. So, why, why, level, he's, why would you have to level the roof? The roof's already there. I know, yeah. but that's yeah. in that estimate. Yeah. Was That's included the cost of leveling the roof. And I'm mm -hmm. wondering, you're restoring a roof on a building, but you want mm -hmm. to make sure the framing is adequate to hold yeah. the slate that was there before. Well, that's where we have to take and design the scope of work so they know exactly what we're talking about, what we want. I, I don't know if we have to draw a bigger, to throw out a bigger net, though. Mm. I mean, you can keep asking the locals, mm. but, you know, you're being held hostage mm. to a handful of people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you might want to put an ad out in the paper yeah. mm -hmm. yep. and see what you can attract. I mean, the plans on our website? The invitation to bid? I can't recall. I have to double check. Well, I mean, even if it's not a bid, I mean, if we're, you know, like you say, it's oh, a we can. put the plans out there and let them take and respond. You know, that way they can see yep. them and, you know, if they're interested or not. Okay. It's a public record. It's not like it's, yep. you know, like, we're not holding hostage for anything. And how do you want me to word it? Do you want me to ask for quotes for the attic? Reinforcement? I think so. I think that's what I'm looking at. So, well, myself. Right, interest, yeah. at least interest. That's what we're yeah. looking for, at least. So. We need some yeah. interested parties that will take and be able to do the work. Yeah, it's the, it's the roofing space, I think, we need to focus on. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Because the ones that I met with last week did say that the attic space was big enough that it would make it a, a fairly not easy job, but it would be, it's not like you're in a cramped, confined mm -hmm. place. The area that you have to work with is, is workable. Oh, I would not want to be up there this time of year. Oh, no. not even this weather. That would yeah. oh, be brutal. Get that. Yeah, that would be the first one her business. That may see you Yeah. You know, the fear that I have also is that yeah, sooner or later, we're going to have exposed. Also, we get to winter time. Mm -hmm. and, uh, bad weather. It's just. Uh, I'm more concerned about the rain than the end of snow. Well, rain is yeah. a problem. No, I agree. Yeah, and I'm if, we, if we get it's cold, it blows off. One yeah. thing that I did notice that, um, well, I didn't notice, but my husband noticed, is unless there's room underneath the rafters up in the attic, it, there's potential that some of those plates that they're talking about screwing on the top and the bottom of the rafters will be required to go up through the ceiling in the second floor, which were uh, all ten or five rafters, two sides, so be ten holes that would have to be reattached. So there is uh, some pretty uh, detailed information in there that's very minute and very, um, very complicated to get to if that's the case of unless you can get in there and secure it in a different fashion. It's not an easy fix. Yeah, just put the information out to us. Here we can place a cast of water net. And, and we're just looking for interested parties so we can have a, a list to go to and, and see if we can pare this down a little bit. Okay. Because unfortunately, where we're at right now, is you can't put a roof on it mm. yeah. and expect it to last. You know? Right. No, I don't want that thing to be. I want it to be right, but I mean, this whole project right now is, you know, potentially this roof fix is going to cost us more than the roof itself. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, potentially. Yeah, no, 
then we still get to figure out where the funding is coming from. Right. Um, well, especially if you're using that number. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, we'd have to go back and do a more article next year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To do it that way, I'll put it off. Only legitimate way we could do it. Well, we could do it with a warrant, but we could just put it in the budget. Because it is like you have a choice. Yeah, it is maintenance, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, yeah, I know, but we don't have a choice. We need to do it, so it's. Yeah, yeah but they could take it out of the. People could see that and take it out of the budget too. Maybe yeah, could either way. So, yeah. I'd rather be upfront with them and say, "Here it is." You know, it's part and parcel of it. Yeah, I, th I think that goes a little bit beyond maintenance. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If, when you go, all maybe just put a coat of paint on it or a new window. Yeah, this is like a rebuild. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I agree. I, I would blow on that one. It's it's more than maintenance. Yeah. So I'd rather do it personally. I'd do it. I'd lean towards the warrant article, so it's right up front, so the people can have that discussion. It's their money. It's their building. Okay. That's my two cents. All right. Yeah, super cool. Um, another one you might want to contact is Stephen Tamarki. I know they do work with this. I think I was on my list. Yeah, well, you know, if they don't give you an answer, I can take them out of the cage. They owe me. Marquis, you said? Stephen, Stephen Tamarki, they're out of Merrimack. Oh, not too far from where you work. School enough. Okay. Um, That's right. Reach out for them. That's that pile. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, the next on the thing is to get um, job descriptions and return to work policy. Okay. You want to grab one? Should I grab that stuff? Or is it done? Yep. Or at least make a good project. What about this issue? Yeah. Uh, well, that's the return to work policy. Yeah. That we can look at. Which one do you guys want to do first? Job description or return to work? Job description. Job description. how the state does it. it doesn't mean that's how we need to do it. However, there's some good wording in here, I think, in, in designs that we might be able to utilize, I think, for our job description so we don't get so lengthy. Yep. Um, yeah, like, we were kind of lengthy yeah. last time. Right. You know, it's like, uh, for example, um, I just had a thought on this one. You know, how we have this whole thing about physical activity requirements and it's mm -hmm. like a whole page. Um, like for example, um, this is the highway patrol form. Um, this is the classification. So, this is the highway patrol form. You know, it has like working conditions, requires performing regular job functions in an adverse working environment containing a, com a combination of dis uh, disagreeable elements, which impacts simply upon the employee's capacity for completing work assignments, total includes work related accidents, and poor assaults. Uh, requires medium work, including continuous strenuous activities such as frequent reaching, bending, or lifting as well as performing work activities which require fine manual dexterity or coordination. They basically give you like a overall, this is what it could happen, you know, and then we don't have to go to the exact numbers. You know, it gives us a little bit of leeway. Mm -hmm. you know, 
And again, it depends on how hard you want to mean, because then you get like a warehouse supervisor. Their physical demands requires medium work, including strenuous activities. You know, those are very similar, but their working conditions are different. You know, vertical job functions in environment which includes exposure to the use physical elements, very number of disagreeable working conditions with frequent exposure to mind injuries. So I mean it depends on what you got, you know, what type of job mm -hmm. you can take and craft it to be. Like it's a little listing and all of the yeah. Yeah. I like but, that idea. Yeah. You know, it gives you your skills, your knowledge, your impact, you know, supervision, work conditions, it, it lists it all up here. As part of that, I also gave you a uh, definition or what's it contained in the class specification, that's what the state uses. I don't know if it would be helpful to anybody. I mean some of it is and it's just the coding system, but it kind of gives you some definitions of what the what they put in it um, for a job description. The system's been around for quite a while and seems to have worked for us yeah, on the state level. Pretty concise. So they're consistent with the different job descriptions too. Yes. Warehouse exactly. supervisor yeah. versus highway patrol. Yeah, they're all set up the exactly the same. Okay. And you just put it. And but the thing is, in um, on like the uh, county technician, for example, this is a supplemental under disclaimer. You know, we were talking about this the other day, uh, last week, two weeks ago. What is that county? The accounting technician. <coughs> On the second page, it's a disclaimer statement. The supplemental job description, we just said the job description lists essential functions of the position. It's not intended to include every job duty and responsibility specific to the position. You know, so it just basically tells you, you know, there could be other things you're going to be doing that you don't have, you don't have to list yeah, that may not be listed, right? right? An employee may be required to perform other related duties not listed on the supplemental, or in this case, job description provided, as such duties are characteristic of that classification, or in this case, the job, you know, the position. You know, we can modify it to fit our, our need on that, but basically it's a, a nice little short, concise disclaimer to basic saying, everything on this paper is not everything you're gonna do, and anything you can do above and beyond on this paper is gonna be related to your job. You know, so in other words, if you're a transfer station, Attendant, you're not going to be doing janitorial work here in the town office because it's not part of your job description. Maybe picking up trash in the town office, but you're not going to be doing the you know, vacuuming and window washing. You know. I don't know if I got that one. Um, I think I might have gotten two supervisors. Uh, Someone have two job descriptions. Mm -hmm. And warehouse assistant highway. I gave you a couple of good ones. You guys got warehouse uh -huh. maintainer two, you got a warehouse superintendent, warehouse supervisor, and an assistant patrol phone, and a county technician. And, and the county technician? Accounting. 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 Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay, and that's where you're reading this last? Yeah, on the back of that. Oh, okay, all right. Okay. So, I mean, I don't know if you want to, you know, we can flip through some of this stuff, and, you know, what I think we can probably will pull this five page document down to probably two, maybe two and a half. Well, they have it down to page One. and a half. Right, but if you get a number, basically, you know, for example, this accounting technician, this is a supplemental, there's another class, another two page classification codes with it. Oh, I see. Oh, but right. some of the thing, you know, this just is like general. I should have probably did that so you could actually see that. For, but I mean, some of the same stuff is on both, but some of the stuff isn't. The classification is just a generalized one. This one's, a, this one's specific to the person that. How, how, do, they, how do they tie the two together? To it um, yeah. How do they pull that document in? Non well, class code, job class code, function code. Oh, yeah. yeah, just function code is the class code. Right, yeah. 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 All right, so that's how they link the two. Right. Okay. Yeah, but we don't have, to have two. I'm just saying. We no, we have one, one, but one, but it doesn't have to be a five sport. Yeah. yeah. I mean, as I say, I think we can take them. Use some of this language that might be helpful to us in the formats you know, so we can take and just blow through some of these. Mm -hmm. And then some of them, like for example, uh, the maintainer too. I can actually I have the SJB for that one. And we probably put it together and do Pete's job description pretty quick and easy. Because it is job that's not much different than a, a maintainer too yeah. in the state. Right. Yeah, so we might be able to borrow some of these things so they can we skip the, the ball rolling for some of the because they haven't been looked at in, yeah. since I've been here, maybe one or two, and it's they're not the very sparse. Yeah. And I brought you the account technician because I thought it might, be, it might find something interesting in that. For, they have all different kinds. We have clerks, we have accounting, 
technicians, we have accounting clerks, we have this regular clerk, and so I can find job descriptions that may be helpful for what you do in a view of that. Instead of reinventing the wheel, just borrow some of their real language and put it together. Yeah. So. Accountability, as I say, we only need is like about you know half a dozen bullet points. This is what we're doing. You know, you're doing as a job. Um, you know, like the, you know, that's why I brought the uh, warehouse supervisor and superintendent. To, to one's a one's a labor rate 17, one's a labor rate 23. But I mean, you know, the different bullet points. And so, you know, so we don't have to list out every single job. We can grab things, pull together. So you could easily take this and fit it into each other's jobs. Mm -hmm. Maybe we will you know, word smithing. Mm -hmm. All right, I, I can start by plugging a few of these in. I'll send my Word version electronically with some of these changes, and you'll have all these at home if you want to yeah. review and. Um, and we have these electronically too. Did you I can, no, I didn't. Oh, I, you didn't. I have them electronically at home. I can send them to you. Some are PDF, some are Word, but, yeah. they, but you can still cut and paste from each other. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, I mean, the tel yeah. That's also. Um, no, these are pretty pretty straightforward too. Um, here I did <laughs> some other things. <coughs> On this one here uh, for education and experience, mm -hmm. I brought this as an example. Granted, this is for someone that needs an associate's degree, but it basically the, uh, we're talking about the other. Uh, the last meeting regarding um, the exchange or education and experience back and forth and now <coughs> this one required an associate's degree so in, at the end of it it says each additional year of approved formal education may be substituted for one year of required work experience and then on the experience side it says one year of experience in bookkeeper and accounting work and each additional year of approved work experience may be substituted for one year of required formal education so basically, if you have more education, it counts for the experience, and you have more more experience, it counts towards the education. So that way, you don't take a handcuff yourself to, yeah. you know, you might have a good candidate here that doesn't have an associate's degree in this case for this particular position I pulled it out of, but you know, they'll have, they have all the experience, and they're better candidate than the person that has the associate's right. degree. Because that person has more. Yeah. Yeah. So this way, it gives us some flexibility. Uh, also highlights some stuff that we might want to think about putting in a job description. Ability to adapt to accept established methods, <laughs> mm -hmm. ability to prepare complete and accurate counter reports and statements, you know, ability to gather, assemble, correlate, analyze facts, identify existing potential problems, ability to contribute to the development of sound operational procedures. Sound familiar? Yeah. yeah. Really good fit. Mm -hmm. uh, ability to supervise, train, and assign to uh, work to subordinates, ability to establish and maintain a harmonious working relationships with fellow employees, vendors, customers, and the general public. Okay, I like that. Yep. Because in this one here, it's pretty. Easy. And this way, it kind of just keeps it short, sweet to the point. Yeah. You know, and kind of tells you where we fire expectations. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Thoughts? No, I'm going to read this. So. Yeah. yeah. If you want more, I can. I mean, you can go, actually, this stuff is on public website. You go to the um, Department of Personnel website under job classifications, you can pull up. I mean, they've got. Thousands of them. All this is in there. This will oh, yeah. be my priority tomorrow. After I get the website, the library stuff on the website. The paper. Yeah, sure. That was just filling my thoughts on Well, I, well, I sold you last two weeks ago. I'd bring some stuff. You know, get, but I thought you might know, send it electronic and I was just going to cut and paste some stuff. Yeah. This works. I you know, know the other one was a little too uh, restrictive. Mm -hmm. You know, when. We have all left this many pounds or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I have a question for you, Chief. Now, do you guys have job descriptions for all your officers and positions in your department? We have job descriptions. Um, we don't have a job description for the Saga, which was a newly made position. It does need to be updated as well. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, I think, you know, one of the things we're, we're looking at, uh, to town employee-wise, I mean, that would you know branch out to your department as well. So. Sometime in the future, I mean, that way we could hold it. You know, fire department, highway department, you know, the office. We, you know, we really need to do that sort of thing because if some, as we've learned with workers' comp, if they need to return to work, 
the doctors before they return to work need to look at a job description. This is what you do. You know, I mean, obviously, you know, sergeant one would, wouldn't be a hard, you know, blend between the officer and yours, I'm sure, somewhere in between. It would be, it would be the officer plus all the supervisory. Right, exactly. So, I mean, but, I mean that's, if something happened, God forbid, that, you know, they need to go out on workers' comp and they're going to come back to work, the doctors have to have that job description. So that's why we're doing a kind of a push to get this one done. Yeah, but, as you were talking about, I was, I was thinking about our own job description. Right. But, I mean, we should have one for everybody for that particular reason. I mean, you never know when something's going to happen. And it's just good policy for us. I agree. Uh, so we've got workers' comp. That's the next thing on the list here. This is from the state. We can change it, modify it, whatever. But basically, it's a safety program. And so this is the purpose of the workers' compensation program is to provide requirements for filing a work-related injury. It sets forth the requirements for an early return to work program and the right to employee training. Uh, everybody in the DOT is trained on this thing. So I don't know if you guys want to read through it and, and you know, go through it tonight real quick and kind of give some direction to the link because we need to have this on record here before too long. Yeah. So we don't have one. This stuff that says HR safe stuff like that, I can get you that information electronically and send it. So it's part of the program. And 301 and 302 are policies that we have with the DOT. And just use them as a, uh, as a good place to start. You know, we can change them. And LAB 504.5, that's the uh, that's labor rules. Along with the same thing, LAD 1400. That's the labor rules, too. So they can, they can get you all the copies of this electronically. They might be able to do that tomorrow if we can use it. So. Task analysis, that's what they call them, um, uh, what they call them, the DOT. Basically, it's a little, it's more detailed than your... Uh, Job description? It, it's, well, it is, it's a bunch of them that a person may do a different tasks. They're really detailed um, for safety. I would change this to just job description. Is that a job task? Yeah. Well, I mean, it says job task analysis. Yeah. Um, I say that it's basically... It's kind of like what you did with uh, the job description and trying to list out every little thing. Okay. It's like, say, um, we can leave it in there or we can try to do that. I, mean, I think the job description would be a good start. I, mean, I don't think we have the time nor the resources that they can put together job task analysis. The definition should probably, probably be. Oh, did uh, Jimmy mention the second injury fund of the primaries? Second injury fund for because reimbursement or something? Right, because the yeah, second injury fund is basically for already existing issues from previous injuries. I, I followed up with that with them. I don't know if that's something we should talk about in public. Right. Well, no, I mean, just, just letting them know. Yeah, no, I did talk to them. Mm -hmm. Well, John, what's your thoughts? It's a lot of information. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> 
So I think it's pretty good. It's something we want to take and use as a template and modify for our own use. Well, I think we can take things from it. Yeah. by everybody because mm -hmm. that used to be a big thing is the minute anyone has any type of injury mm -hmm. to report it and just do an incident report. Mm -hmm. So you know sometimes people want to let it go and before you know it mm -hmm. you have a problem. Oh yeah, yeah. It would be nice to have the joint loss you know their joint loss folks should be looking at this stuff and reviewing it. Not we just us. for a September meeting. Right, but I mean, well, we could take and use it for, you know, you know, tentative approval, you know, it would be nice to let them have their eyes on it and, you know, add and take away what they think for, for final approval. Yeah. Yeah, because Section 8 is early return to work here. through the Department of Labor, you know, like the 75 WCA forms and medical Yeah, report. I saw that, yeah. You know, and that's the one that every time you go, you know, anybody that's on work is comfortable to doctor, they should be having that form, should be coming back to us, a copy of it. That's the one that the doctors sign off saying no. That's at the early return to work? Uh, no, well, the 75 WCA is a medical report, so every time an employee that is on work is comfortable. I'll look at the number. I have been getting reports, and I didn't, I didn't notice the number yeah, they should on be. it. You send yeah. one to you and you send one to yep. Primax. Exactly. Correct. Primax yep. gets the original. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Usually the ones that the employer gets are like pink or golden yeah. rod. I think it's been a yellowish yep. color. Yep. Depends on who made the form. <clears throat> So they can kind of put together a list of return of duties that are potentially doable. Because the thing is, we don't have like, you know, a hundred jobs no. mm -hmm. to choose from you now. Yeah, exactly. We get all kinds of things you can choose from. We have a very limited mm -hmm. pile. And it'll also depend on the person returning, what the doctor says that they can do right. as well. So. Yeah. But we got to make a good faith effort and try oh, to yeah. find, you know, find some, you know, or not find them, I should say, develop them. Yeah. And that's also a possibility. I mean, we may not be able to, depending on what it is. Right. I mean, well, everything here in the office is clerical. And I don't know how many yeah. you know, skills are out there. But, and then as far as physical, it's, it's hard to something that you limited to, then right. there aren't many jobs there either. Yeah, it's tough. It does. Well, we're a small, you know, we're not a big, right. big employer. We're very small. Well. So what's your thoughts, gentlemen? I mean, as I say, we Neither reinvent the whole wheel or we can take and cannibalize this one. I would say cannibalize. You, know, you, say you can break stuff out of this that mm -hmm. you can use, you know. We only have this in PDF? I guess, yeah. Word, didn't I? I didn't see it in. I got this out of that huge list that I saved. Yeah, but I got kind of those are all in Word, I believe. Yeah. Okay, I'll look at them again to start modifying it. Just take and get all the stuff electronic and just put on my phone drive and come over and do a dump instead of trying to flood your email. Okay. 
Yeah, there's a lot of data being put into an email, you like show up the email. Done that before. Me too. <laughs> in fact, I did it this week. <laughs> oh, something. Yeah. Oops, that file, the thing is in the server. All right, so. Well, the project just, says anything too, but they might. They might. You know, we could be, you know, between the two. Because I know this one, back in 2000, uh, the DOT was cited by the Department of Labor. And that's what developed these whole all those programs. Yeah. And this hasn't changed in 16 years. Really. I mean it has a little bit here and there. I mean it's been a third revision, but it's all minor stuff depending on what the laws change. So it's been blessed by the Department of Labor. It shouldn't be too far off from what they were looking for. Okay. Keep us out of trouble. It's on September, Friday, September 9th, from 6.37 the cash bar, and 7 o'clock is the intriguing program and sumptuous dinner. Mm -hmm. Anybody interested mm -hmm. in going? During the week? It's a Friday, yeah. at night. Yeah. 25 bucks. So we get paid to go? No. <laughs> so we get paid to oh, go. I pay them. I don't know. I thought it was like a bonus. <laughs> and what are we going to get out of from you? The same thing you've always gotten out of me. Oh, well, then. Zilch. You're not going there. <laughs> Pain in the ass. Something like that. I won't argue on that one. At least we agree. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, so, unless you want to go to the <laughs> Sure. I haven't seen anything yet, so. Okay, I just was on the agenda, so it I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, oh, that's just the. Oh, uh, no, that's future that was, things. Yeah, oh, that's future. Uh, action list. Okay. Yeah. business yeah. continued. Okay. So when we have free time, we can refer back to it. Yeah. I can keep it fresh in my mind to present it to them. It's a parking lot, so we don't forget it. Yeah. We don't do that. Okay, thank um, you. We got a uh, from the Revenue Administration regarding some land. Yeah, that's process um, that we go through every year. If preparing the tax for 17 and 18 flood control reimbursement for years. And we just put together the I think the bottom piece of property wasn't listed, right? Yep. That's good. It's one way for us hopefully. Yeah. Well it was just 20, enough 53 acres. Um, I don't know we not have a piece of property listed at all we Well the that issue happened. that we had is back in the day when I first started, they were only like five town properties. And what we did well, on our town own property. town property in oh. the flood control area, and what we had done is we merged them all. Mm -hmm. So then we found that the, um, what, what division is that? Hmm? What division is that? Is that the uh, state? Um, DRA. DRA. Yeah, DRA. Um, they were reimbursing us based on loss of revenue for five properties, but what we didn't what we found out after is because they're comprised of 20 properties, you know, 100 properties, that made a difference in the calculation of what we were getting for flood control money. So we so took the time to go through the deeds, to go through our old tax map on the wall and uh, pull them apart with whether they had landlock, land, uh, road funding, which is more valuable for potential loss of building We can't do anything with this because it's in the flood control. Correct. Area, they but. took the land from us. So. Right. Well, so, in other words, this one, is, in this case, it's actually more valuable as the sum of the parts instead of the whole. That's right. right. Nice. Yeah. Very good. So, anyway. Um, does John 
Stevens had a role in this stuff? Or does it matter for him? That, what he was doing? No, that is not part of yeah, um, town it's property. It's state property. State property. It's Army Corps. Federal, Corps. Yeah. yeah, federal, state, and then Army Corps. Okay. Cool. Uh, we got a request here for some vacation leave from June. Again? Yeah. Oh, goodness. Last week, you walked us to me. I did choose a week that we're not meeting so that I don't That's miss nice. out on any important meeting time. So I'm not saying we have any objection to us. When, when is this? Uh, the last week of August? Yeah. Uh, next week. Week after. Yeah. yeah. And it's in two and a half weeks. It would be the 29th and then returning on the day after right. Labor Day the 6th. Yeah, we meet the week before. Correct. Yeah. This is a uh, just a leave, <laughs> request to leave or, or vacation. 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 Yeah. vacation. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, can I comment? Well, we have public notice from the ZBA. I don't know. Can someone read Allison's writing? So, yeah. Oh, she just it's. Um, Tell them about contacting Fred Mullen regarding variance request, request and he will be in touch with up touch. members, members etc. Regarding public uh, here on the community. We did good. Okay. <laughs> need thicker glasses, so yeah. stronger glasses. Uh, well, you got a public hearing, G. We'll just serve every representative and have one came to our trust. Request for answer to Article 4, Section C, not even point of That's actually mentioned. old news now. It was last this past Monday, and both were granted. So, okay, so I, was there. I don't know why it was in our. It's an FYI. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, we have to notice the town as well as the abutters. Mm -hmm. Information so you know what's going on around town. All right. Um, I know you haven't seen this. He has. Cause <coughs> I read this the other day when I was here. Basically, over on um, the <coughs> resident who was concerned regarding over my neck of town, <laughs> where Boris Road and Twist Hill come together, there is a old blacksmith shop that's falling apart. Falling the down. one on the corner? Yes. Yeah. I know the building. Yes. And yeah, it's cool. It's looked the Morris same since twist. I was a kid. Twist. Oh, I've seen it. I used to be in it when I was a kid. That thing is lost well, I mean, considerably. No, no, it's coming down. Yeah. I mean, yes. It's been there. It's been there a long time since I was a kid. Oh, I used to go running around there as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> I can admit that now. It's statute of limitations is gone. Oh, I'm gone. <laughs> so I'm too old. <laughs> it's around the corner of Morris and Twist Hill. Yeah. And, uh, but anyway, she's concerned about it uh, being a, uh, a line of sight issue for when you come up. And I honestly know on that road for as long as I have, it is a little bit of a line of sight issue. I mean, you guys probably might see it too. I don't know. You need any patrols. Because you come up there, and by the time you stop, then you got to take it, it the, to the right is a short stretch. I mean, probably 150 feet or so. And then it goes over a hill. Yeah, even less. So I someone coming over that hill, they're right on top of you before you can even. By the time you pull out, they're right on your butt or in your door. Yeah. And by the time you pull out and you're looking left, that thing is right there. You almost have to pull your car out depending on how you sit in your vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. To the point where you're almost in the, starting to get an encroach on the lane, the travel lane, so you can see up the road and see kind of what's coming. Yeah. So, it, I mean, I know I've almost been whacked here a couple times just trying to see. I know Jeff made an effort to send John out there to cut, or somebody to cut yes. the grass because that does that help. help. Yeah, much. Um, that was a big help. But anyway, that's her whole concern about that thing. Um, I know from past discussions with Ron Warner when he was sitting on the board, I guess they approached uh, looking at that issue before. Jeff had approached the homeowners to get permission to take it down because the mm -hmm. property it sits on is with the white colonial that's on Morse Road. Prescott. No, no. It's, it sits on the five-acre lot that was subdivided that's part of that property. Oh, further off. down, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. when Jeff approached Bruska because he knows there's some history behind it mm -hmm. where it was part of the family, mm -hmm. uh, it, owned by the family, um, he wanted to let him know that the owners mm -hmm. of the land gave him permission to take it down. Yeah. But he um, said that he owns the structure uh, as where part is the, of the... proof that he owns the structure? I, my understanding is when you sell a property, you sell it with everything. Um, if you want something that's on the property, mm -hmm. you need to remove it in yep. order to exactly. Uh, or, you, or you subdivide it out, you keep that piece. Right, and that yeah, would be.
creating a non-conforming lot just right. for that purpose of that structure. So if he's got permission from one to take it down. Um, mm -hmm. When he followed up, because I did give a copy of this to Jeff um, with Bruska the second time around, mm -hmm. Paul told him that he had someone who was interested in taking dismantling it and taking it away. I so know a historical society or historical where so I was interested in something because they had the old um, belts set up there uh, for the you know, water wheel type of power driven driving system in there. Wow. They wanted to take it. I remember yeah. talking to Gary, um, Gary Tell about yeah. that. Yeah. Was. yeah, I think it's still on yeah. hold a little bit. Maybe I should ask them again if they're interested in it and then mm -hmm. get a hold of, have Jeff get a hold of uh, Paul Bruska. Well, I was thinking, I think just throwing this out there, we have a highway safety committee. Maybe we have those folks take a look at it and come back with an actual, you know, group report. Um, the one, argument that this woman yeah. says is that that structure is a liability. Well, they, if you're in a vehicle, you have to have full control of your vehicle, right? right? But the liability is on the homeowner that owns it if someone trespasses and gets injured or hurt right. in that structure. Right. That's where the liability comes in. I, I don't know that we can force homeowners to, to uh, or property owners to take down structures because they're a line of sight issue. I don't know. We have the right. to do that. No. There's a lot of those situations in yeah. town. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah. So when you pick on one, yeah. you're going to have somebody else coming in with another corner. I mean, yeah. Then again, I mean, if the, if the structure is being lived in and actually useful, that's one thing. But this thing is, in essence, is abandoned. It's no different than having that derelict that was down on the, um, the, the um, burnt out house there. Oh, yeah. Down on uh, Gene Drive. Gene Drive, thank you. You know, where that, you know, we had to take, go through the whole process of declaring it unfit and you know we we're gonna take it down if we had to. But that was a hazard. Yeah. And, and I understand